going to tell you is upsetting. So I warn you in advance. And maybe I'll cry. Because it's still quite hard. My mother was, uh, she grew up in Australia. Mm -hmm. She worked in Australia. And she loved going to Bali. She always travelled alone. She was going to stay there for two months and celebrate her birthday there. I had just started a job in Qatar and Bali is many hours ahead. And I got an email from my mother that morning and she said, look, you know, always don't, don't forget Nana. And she said, I'm very happy that you're happy at your work. And at the same time, my mobile was going off and it was a friend in Australia saying, you need to watch the news. So I put the news channel on. They mentioned Sari Club, and she used to love the Sari Club. And then I panicked, so I thought I'd better call the hotel to see if my mother is there. Your mother left last night to go out, but she didn't come back. I had a burning desire to find my mum. I knew I had to go there mm -hmm. and try to find my mum. They broke it to me. But, you know, your mother didn't survive. And I was crying and crying and crying. So the morgue was a makeshift building and I got access even though they closed it to everybody. One side was all glass and there was all the bodies in bags. And I told you before my mum there was a big lady and I was immediately drawn to the one bag. And he said to me, do you have a photo of your mother? He said, you are welcome to go and identify. No one is stopping you, you can do that. But you look at that photo and you remember your mother by that photo. And do you know what? All of a sudden, that fight that I had inside me to go to Bali to find my mum, to identify my mum, to go and open that bag, that desire just went away. Because I think that she wouldn't like me to see that, to open the bag, keep the photo and remember your mother that way. And they eventually identified her from DNA. I checked my emails and it was a reply from Katie the first time. She said, Mike, I just want to tell you that yes, I was with your mum. Your mum was drinking an orange juice. Uh, she had a t-shirt with a tiger on it. And your mum was so nice, she was so beautiful. But to me, I got answers to my questions. My mother was there. And I knew what she did towards the end. Katie met my mum, and that night she said to my mother, Do you think I should wear high heels or flats? And my mother said to her, You are beautiful, you don't need high heels. And Katie was there. She went to the toilet the same time the bomb went off, and she survived. She told me that that night your mother told me to wear flats saved my life because I could climb and run. And she said, I bet you have a lot of unanswered questions. I said, yes. <laughs> and she said, from Milano, Katie is here. <laughs> and she said to me, your mother was so proud of me. And I just cried, and I cried, and I cried. But the good thing is, we became the best of friends, <laughs> and we are still friends. My mother took me to Malta in 81 for the summer. Okay. I met my grandfather for the first time. Oh, had grazia, had grazia Malta, You know what I mean? I loved it. I fell in love with Malta. And after the Kalam bin Malti, I had the Shukultan, but after the Nifta had the Adi Achen bin Bara, and I love it, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy, and I think I owe that to my mum. <laughs> I am where I am today because of my mum.